I would like everyone to press F to pay respects to the Sonic Heroes pinball physics. Uh, Why? This game gets it right. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't pay respect to the Sonic Heroes pinball physics. Those pinball tables were fucking terrible. It wasn't even the physics that were the main issue with that. It was just the fact that the board itself just seemed to be more of a suggestion than an actual level design. Uh, <laughs> well, the physics were terrible as well uh, in the sense that they yeah. didn't exist. Um, <laughs> Fucking, I, I, I swear to Christ, if I look at it wrong, I'm clipping through something. <laughs> like, God damn. Anyway, so Pinball Carnival here is our first of two pinball levels. Yeah, we've got two pinball levels for some reason. I just thought his tail was flying in the background there. Does he does he have his own act in this? No, but um, no matter which, which character you're playing as, uh, as long as someone else isn't playing in multiplayer as a character with you, you will frequently see the other characters doing things in the background. It's a charming little detail. Like in Sky Temple, there was a, there, there's, a, there's a moment where Knuckles just flies by um, in the background. It's neat. They're helping. If you're playing as someone other than Amy, you might see Amy playing with the animals in the background in uh, Bridge Island Zone. It's like, are you actually going to help me in this game? Are you fucking crazy? I like how Amy's entire reason for being here is that she was hanging out in Green Hill Zone and she just happened to see uh, Sonic and Tails flying by in the tornado. And she's like, oh, I want to see what they're up to. And she runs off. I do appreciate that they established that, like, the characters aren't just all hanging together for some arbitrary, unexplained reason. Like, oh, everybody was just invited to the same party at the same time when Eggman was dick. For some <laughs> like, reason. like Sonic Heroes, yeah. Uh, the, the, um, the awkward thing about the, um, ah, oh, damn it, I missed the warp. Well, now you're stuck here. Doctor Strange can't help you now. <laughs> no way home. But like, okay, so <laughs> the awkward thing is you don't get to see the uh, the other characters opening cutscenes unless you start a new file with them. There's no way that I know of to rewatch the opening cutscene because whenever you pick Bridge Island Act 1, you just jump straight to Bridge Island Act 1. But yeah, every character does have their own opening cutscene. Although I think Sonic and Tails share the same opening because, you know, they both fly in on the tornado chasing Fang. Um, it's just weird, you know? Yeah, I think at the very least, uh, unless we're just flat out fucking wrong about this, I think there should have been like at least a cutscene viewer. It, it would have been nice, yeah. I do like that they um, actually... Oh, maybe there is. I might, I might be just misremembering. I don't remember seeing anything, but... Um, yeah. I, I appreciate that they at least finished all of the act transitions in this game in the launch release rather than, you know, having to save that for a plus edition. Um, well, you know they're going to do one of those anyway and charge you another 60 bucks or 80 actually in order to get the plus. Oh, <laughs> no, they'll charge previous owners 10 bucks and uh, newcomers probably 50. If I would. Give yeah, that's take. what they did with Origins. But like I was I was talking about yeah. Mania where they didn't have the all the act transitions finished for the uh, initial release. So it was it was added in a patch update when Plus came out. So we didn't get stuff like the we didn't get stuff like the um the Sonic Sonic 2 8 bit hang gliders until um the Plus update. To to their credit, it was at least a free update um but, you know. And I can only hope that's going to be the case with Superstars when it starts getting some major patches because I've looked at the uh, between parts I've looked at the change log uh, that you can find in places like Sonic Retro whenever the game gets updated and so far nothing does yeah. Sonic Retro have <laughs> to look up all the changes themselves or does Sega post what well, the, they probably like data mine that shit themselves well because I know th I know that like if Nintendo releases an update for Splatoon for example they'll say oh we changed ink uh, usage of this weapon by this percent or whatever yeah and you know they always all say stuff like various bug fixes and don't like sometimes don't specify which bugs actually got fixed sometimes because they're too embarrassing that to admit that they happened or they'll be like a rare issues where players may accidentally uh wind up in an uh game 
and they word it in such a way to not directly imply that you're a dumbass for doing this, but hey. heavily infer <sighs> that you're a dumbass for doing I this. I don't want to say out loud that we post your IP address. <laughs> But we post your IP address. Listen, I'm not saying that it's our fault that we need you to mail in your copy of Metroid Other M in order to fix it. But I mean, oh you shouldn't God, have looked right. at that thing. You Fucking have uh, backwards. Like, what the hell were you thinking? Didn't that also happen with Skyward Sword? Yeah, there was a there was a soft lock for your game in Skyward Sword. Whew. You know, <laughs> I'm really Princess sick of this too. goddamn song. <laughs> Oh it is. God. It is not the best track. No, in the dude, this is this is what's gonna play when your fucking sleep paralysis demon <laughs> I mean, shows up in your at room. At least they got the the actual special stage music right. It is legitimately one of the better tracks in the game, but like. Yeah, I agree. I like special stage music, uh, and that was written by T. Lopes. Yeah, everything T. Lopes touches in the soundtrack is aces. By the way. Um. Oh, not for nothing, because uh, I, 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 I felt bad that we were kind of blanking on the names uh, beforehand. But let me get the actual like list of composers for Sonic Superstars, because there's quite a number of names here. The only the only one that I think comes to mind is I think there's someone called Meta. Me you know, there's this there's this really obscure composer on the soundtrack. His name is uh, 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 Gun uh, Sinu. I, I've never heard of him before. You know. <laughs> Dude, you can't pronounce a J as a hard G. <laughs> it's pronounced GIF Sonic. <laughs> okay. I'm joing to kill you. <laughs> okay. Now, to be fair, some of the better tracks in this in this game actually were like written by Jun Sano and um, just rearranged by one of the other composers on the list. And I get, I, yeah. I think I've said this before, but I get the feeling that that was intended to be the thing that happened with all of his tracks, and they just did not have time to do it for all of them before the holiday release. So, uh, Sonic Superstars Plus, please fix this. <laughs> I'm hoping it does, because man, like, this soundtrack is so fucking hit and miss because of it. And you know what? It, you know, it's another, it is really another Sonic 4 situation, because, uh, the the bad tracks pretty much all have good melodies in them they're just extremely undercooked take press factory for yeah take press factory for for example that is a track that i could see being touched up and still sounding really metallic and fitting the the stage it happens in to a t but like all you have is the sonic 4 synth the dying cats and that fucking Sonic 2 drum snare that Jun Sanook just can't let go of. Um. There was um there was a video, I think, Lewis, you shared it with me. Uh, the one by, uh, he's a music composer, or at least studies music theory. Uh, I think it's... I was so close. I can't pronounce this. Longest, longest solo ever, too, has two dedicated videos of Sonic Superstar soundtrack where he breaks down, like, certain, like, even the more infamous, like, tracks in this game like bit by bit and says no like like this bit right here this right here this is a good melody i love the progression of this one it's just that why the fuck did they use these instruments <laughs> yeah and you know you know ever since the game came out there are people there are people who've been like making fun of the people uh making fun of the comments from before release that theorized that some of the some of the worst music we heard before release was placeholder tracks but the worst music in this game does legitimately sound like a placeholder track in in, yeah. in in the context of the larger soundtrack it all does sound like placeholders that just didn't, didn't get re didn't get replaced by better versions of the track and it's just yeah eh. again man like i th i fucking hate this part why did that work you were holding down right i think it's the refresh rate on the pc version I think it's the because you know, I I I watched this part in John's footage and he didn't have this problem. So I think it's the PC version that has this problem in this particular spot. Yeah, but you ever consider that you're just bad at video? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> the, the, the master race, everybody. That PC master race. I have to actually run through this section, but it's so counterintuitive. Oh, nice. <laughs> just fucking that? went to the foreground there. It's so counterintuitive to, to run through this section instead of rolling. See, I, I gave in to temptation and rolled. And 
this time I managed to save myself by jumping, but for some reason, barely. But for some reason, the fi the rolling physics in this section always always screw up, and I am like ninety percent certain it's the PC version's refresh rate that's to blame because John did not have that problem. He rolled through it just fine. Um. So yeah, uh, weird. It's Fucking okay. weird. They'll, fans will mod it out within a month. Uh, there's already mods happening for this game on the PC version. I don't know which though, but I have been told. Uh, so music, uh, Junsuno. Uh, there, there's like I think, totally speaking, like six, seven composers. But like the 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 big folks that folks uh, tend to focus on besides Junsuno is T Lopes, uh, Hidenori Shoji, uh, and Rintaro Soma. I think Hidenori Shoji and Rintaro Soma also contributed to Frontier soundtrack. I think so. Yeah. Uh, Although for the cyberspace levels and uh, some of the uh, some of the mini games you play in Frontier. One of those guys, I think, contributes to the Yakuza series. And uh, if you've ever heard the music in the Yakuza series, it's fucking aces. Yeah, uh, it's uh, Hidden or Shoji. Uh, held composed music for uh, Yakuza and Sonic the Hedgehog. Uh, I believe I believe it's Rintaro Soma specifically, or it might be somebody else that genuinely uses like old like synthesizers from the Genesis era to make his own sort of Genesis contributions for this and they sound much fucking better than what Jensen thinks he's trying to do. I don't want to be too hard because I've I've already kind of run the man down in the SGP playthrough. Well, you but, know on the subject of being too harsh, I will say yeah. that like if the man just doesn't have the heart for chip tunes, then fine. I don't necessarily yeah. mind that. And I don't. I get the feeling that it wasn't necessarily his decision to do the music in like a chip tune style. Yeah, so, the director or producer, you know, if they really wanted. I mean, okay, I'm I'm kind of tangenting on myself before I even finish my thought, but clearly the like the emphasis is to look, you know, have a classic Sonic vibe in the look, but with the 3D kind of like 2.5D visual style. It's really weird to me that they, they tried to be more, I'm gonna use big quotation marks here, authentic with the soundtrack than like in Sonic Mania, they were way more liberal with the use of like, not Genesis-y sounding instruments. Yeah, yeah. and it was much better they, for they it. They tried to do music like they would have done on the Saturn. And that was one of the cool things about Sonic Mania. Or at least, a con a, 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 in general, a contemporary 2D Sonic well, game. Well, yeah, but their, but their, their style, the, the, their stylistic bent in Sonic Mania, on the whole, was Sega Saturn. You could see it most yeah. clearly in the special stages, but they, but they, they threaded that throughout the entire thing because the the Saturn was a 2D powerhouse. It's a travesty that the, that the that the system just did not have a 2D Sonic game to call its own. Uh, an actual 2D Sonic game to call its own. <laughs> I'm not counting that weird mashup of Labyrinth and Flicky. Wait, what? <laughs> I I think you made that up. Sonic 3D Blast was a weird mashup of Isometric Sonic with the oh. arcade game Flicky. Oh, I forgot that. I always forget that Sonic 3D Blast even has a Saturn version. <laughs> um... Yeah, it does. And it's actually a pretty good version of the game. Really good special stages and some nice um visual flourish on on the, the 2d assets and also that soundtrack um like the genesis sonic 3d blast soundtrack is excellent but you know they went full modern on the saturn version it's pretty nice yeah it is but still the point is well not the point is but like for this game specifically they have something going with several acts in this game where the, the, the music composition, its quality is just as good or if not better than what Mania was doing. But for some select tracks, it goes back to how Sonic 4 handled it. And it, it's <laughs> it's so jarring. Oops. <laughs> like going from like this awesome modern sounding piece to like whatever the hell you can describe the music as beforehand. And again, I do wonder, like, I have to agree with Lewis. I, I do wonder is like, is, was it just placeholder? Because as early as the first zone bridge Island, that was a track that was written by June Sinel. It was arranged by T Lopes and it sounds amazing. It sounds modern. It sounds good. It doesn't sound restrained. Yeah. 
uh, but some other tracks in this game, like the really bad ones, the boss music, the mini boss music, some of the uh, zones, they sound ripped right out of Sonic 4, and it's way worse by comparison. I'll I'll still say that for as bad as the boss theme in this game is, it's better than the Sonic 4 Episode 1 boss theme, which... Uh, well, it seemed like it was longer than 28 seconds, so it has that going for it. No, no, it's not. It's the, not. It's the boss just, music here is barely fourteen. It's just not. Oh, a, it, it's just. Oh, yeah. It's just oh. not. It, it's it's better in the sense that it doesn't sound like a literal clown show. Uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, we're on Emerald. What is this? Five. Four. Four. This, oh, is, this four. is four. Uh, five is green. Oh yeah, this is the water emerald. Okay, so uh, Sonic Superstars manages to replicate the classic feeling of having a superpower that's built for use in water. In a game that has barely any fucking water in it, so <laughs> uh, something's never changed. <laughs> so, well, the you know those 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 gamers, they hate water stages. So we can't possibly improve on something. We have to just cut it out. We, we have to put in enough to say that we did it, and then never touch it ever again. Well, the thing is, the water power is neat in that it lets you just straight up swim in water as any character, but. Uh, the only use for it in a, in a level where you don't have actual water to swim in is uh, in a level with a waterfall of some kind to swim up. I think it might potentially work on the sand slides and stuff like that, but I've never tried it because that's just... called water, not sand. Worst game ever. Zero yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, I haven't like experimented thoroughly with the water power, but it's definitely the most situational of the bunch. Um, because it relies on your environment to even have a, a point. Surprisingly no, more than it. vision does. Sand sounds like the worst superpower of all time. It's just like, what can you do? I can move in sand. Anybody can do that, you dumb shit. You're the Marvel fan. Yeah, but I do you it know better. what Sandman is like? Jesus. Yeah, Why are you the one saying this? A C-list Spider-Man villain. Uh, and not much more. Um, S someone should have told the makers of Spider-Man 3 that. I mean, there's place for C-listers, you know? Like, if Sandman is supposed to be, like, the... Dude, the... fucking Across the Spider-Verse made me give a shit about, uh, what the hell was the guy's name? The one with the spots. Uh... Okay, so this level has a gimmick. I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, so, th so this act has a gimmick. Why am I trying to get that ring box when the fire is when the fire switch is right there? Uh, because you have an unhealthy compulsion. Probably. Okay, so this level has a gimmick that I just don't don't really know what it does. But like, you can find these detonators throughout the level, right? And those detonators, oh, right. they blow up a chain of bombs that leads to the Eggman statue way in the back there. See? Um, if you get enough of them, the Eggman statue is like destroyed. It's like smoking and damaged i don't know what it does though like what what is your actual incentive for doing that I, is is it a, is it tied to an achievement i don't know let me check i'm not a fan of this song either it sounds like they took uh mystic k from sonic 2 and then made it sound bad um, <laughs> um. I think the pinball carnival themes are okay. Like the first one, I, th I like more than that. Well, the Act Two one is trying to be the freaking Sonic Heroes Ghost level, um, because it's a Halloween theme level. And yes, that's where you find Tails doll. So uh, that's neat. Who just counts as a gold bat, Nick? And yeah. so, so you destroy him and get one medal. Yeah, it was neat that they that they threw Tails doll into the Halloween level though because that's like a meta reference not just a reference to something in yeah. in the game yeah i'm actually like, surprised it didn't like I, I was expecting more like the sa2 ghosts or something <laughs> like that you know what i mean but no they just want strap tails doll. yeah putting the tails doll in the halloween thing is neat because it, it isn't just like a tails doll cameo it's a reference to the meme that tails doll became in the fandom and the circle is only going to be complete when it transforms into that giant dildo. No, the circle is only going to be complete. <laughs> <laughs> that never gets old. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Fuck. I failed my first special stage. How do you live with yourself? At least it was only for metals and not a chaos emerald. Eh. Uh. I get what you mean, though, by this sounding unfinished. It sounds like a midi 
prototype. No, I, I I would say this is this is one of the tracks that doesn't sound incomplete. It's just like you don't like the composition. That's all. Okay. Well, um, I mean, I'm also listening and I'm listening to this on low volume so that I can like, yeah. hear you guys and with sound effects and whatnot. Well, so. this one has that sort of you remember you remember Sonic Heroes, right? The ghost levels. This one oh, has that sort. This one has that sort of like goofy haunted house vibe going on in its instrumentation and when you're listening at full volume and playing the level seeing all the sheet ghost badniks which was a nice touch um yeah. it, it it actually does like make sense in the context of the level that you're playing well there's definitely games where that works like one of my favorite tracks from kirby triple deluxe is a similar kind of riff on the spooky haunted house you know where there's like um a similar vibe going oh is this the thing that you were complaining about in your um review? hey it's tails doll yeah um yeah because I'm, I'm surprised we're actually just getting into this now because given that lewis finds it a complete non-issue but and maybe i'm just being gaslit or maybe lewis well, is wrong okay <laughs> but i think i i think I think the camera is just too fucking close for some reason in this game. I think it's it's actually it, well the thing is the, the camera's at the exact same distance it's always been, but there's a lot more visual noise for your brain to filter out in the 2.5D style that they have now. So it feels closer yeah. than it is um in a weird way is my theory. Um I think I, I think for the, in the case of the the roller coasters it's probably at its worst. Because I, I I hate the roller coaster bits of this. I, this I think they should have pulled back the camera specifically for the roller coaster sections. Yeah, but I yeah. don't. Well, that's one of the benefits of having a two point five D game is you can zoom in and zoom out the camera. You know, and, and this game and this game does it that. Does? Like it does. It, like multiple times. It does times. do that. They should have done it with the with the roller coaster section. But the the thing is <laughs> with the the thing is with the Sonic camera, you do have to be careful about pulling the camera back because half the sense of speed that classic Sonic even has is an illusion caused by the camera being at the <laughs> it's not real it's, you're not actually going all that fast but the camera being as close as it does makes the ground seem to to zip by faster so you know sonic not actually fast not clickbait you know uh that's a you know that's funny because that that's a trick they, that they used uh in like some of the earliest builds of 06 uh where the camera was deliberately placed closer to the ground to make it seem Sonic was faster yeah. than he actually yeah, was. Yeah, I mentioned that in, I remember, previews for Unleashed, too. It's just like, it's really close to Sonic's back and uh, low down to the ground to make it seem yeah. like you're you're newming. Yeah, so yeah. The, the camera being this close is part of what helps Sonic's sense of speed happen. And in fact, in 2.5D here, it's actually a little bit more effective because the foreground goes by a little faster than you're actually moving because it's closer to you. So the sense of speed is a little bit enhanced, just that tiniest bit. But, like, the thing is, there is a bit more visual noise with this sort of three-dimensional floor. It probably would not be as big of an issue if they'd gone the frickin' 2D Mario route and just made the ground flat. Um, which they kind of did in Sonic 4 Episode 2, now that I think about it. But, like, because the the there's there's a... A deliberately three-dimensional angle on the floor no matter where you go the floor is like several layers of information that you have to parse whenever you're looking at things and it does make it a little harder to react to shit I don't have too much of a problem with it but it's going to vary from player to player and that's not necessarily any players fault it's just a drawback of the style Lewis, just take the low route. Just do it. Dude. <laughs> the low route sucks. <laughs> but I don't want to be here. It's dangerous. <laughs> see? Oh, see. You just got to get it. It was a nice little sneak peek of trip story. This, look, <laughs> look, the low route in this part of the level is where Pinball Carnival decides to channel fucking Scrap Brain Zone. Okay? I don't want to be here. <laughs> <laughs> that is one thing about Sonic games that I do find interesting is, is that, like, if you only play the game once, you do legitimately only see about half of the level design. Um, well, maybe closer to, like, two-thirds, because there are chunks of level that everybody has to go through but like that is i think probably more than anything else the element of sonic that 
gives the series its replay value is that there's a lot of multiple paths and they feel very natural. You know, it's not just like, oh, you found this hidden work uh, block and now you're going to a different, a completely different section. I don't fucking know why I had so much trouble with this section because it's actually rather easy. Because you're going for points that don't matter. Is, well, uh, uh, the oh, the ten things in the back, if you get all of those in a certain section, you get a fucking big-ass payout pay of rings. But uh, I kept missing I kept missing a really easy jump and falling into the blue flame whenever I hit the the uh, the last switch there. I like the kangaroo badnik, by the way, because if you roll into them from the front, they kick you away hard and send you careening in the in the other direction. Oh, well, that's actually really clever. Now that I'm thinking, so like, if you roll into them, you don't take damage; you just zoom the other way. Yeah. You you just get bounced backwards. Yeah. It's like the bumper badniks, which are also here, but like. They kick you back a lot farther, like a, a slightly weaker spring. Anyway, if you get all of the 10s and 20s and whatever else, they release rings on their own, as you can see. But if you get all of them, you get an instant ring payout. That's, that's, um, ooh. Eggman's giant statue isn't looking so good. Eh, yeah, he was building another one, though. I think we can blow it up a few more times, though. Anyway, yeah, you get a big ass payout of rings. And, Why does um, Eggman have explosives on his own statue? Uh, in case it revolts and he needs a get out of jail free car. I, I mean, the golem in 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 in, uh, in in Sonic Adventure Two proves that that's actually a legitimate concern for him. Well, I, I always well, got that, well, the egg golem, the egg golem wasn't his. Yeah. Like he put a restraining mechanism on it, but it's not his. Mm, true. That was well. It, we're never like confirmed, but that's just like the reasonable. I mean, implication that, that yeah, that yeah, that is the implication. Yeah. It's funny because like that's the only, that's like the the second instance of a desert golem in, to show up in in Sonic. If I had a nickel for every time Sonic the Hedgehog used a desert golem as a boss, <laughs> I'd have two nickels. I mean a desert golem that wasn't built as a robot, but like as an, as an actual magical golem. Like, we find it fucking weird that there's a random big-ass purple dragon as the final boss of this game, but like, nah, Sonic's had weird mystical monsters yeah, as bosses Sonic is, as early as like Sonic 3. like 15 different mystical godly forces buried within the underworld in the Sonic universe. Well, I mean, just it's... like in the classic games, right? The the Sand Golem was like the first one. It was also a really lame boss fight, but, you know, for flavor, it was interesting. Do they pull a lot of these sound effects straight from the Genesis games, or are they redone? I think they're redone. Okay. Or at the very least, pulled from Mania. Uh, no, there's a lot of repurposed sound effects from as early as Unleash. Hmm. Uh, I have um, I have a whole ass folder of ripped sounds from Unleashed, and it's amazing how they're still being used even today. Mm. Why do you have a random folder of Unleashed sound effects? Animations. Oh, okay. Uh, and oh, uh, different different little graphical things that I like to do every once in a while. Oh no! <laughs> Maybe it has an effect on this part of the level, like because this is where you can see the statue the closest. Son of a bitch! The um the the springy the 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 springy launchers in that bit are just like slightly too high for this camera distance to be like totally visible um at the end there oh god um, damn it i, I reloaded a... from this checkpoint again okay so i have a question for you guys and uh i don't know if this is just a matter of how lewis plays sonic do you guys feel like the stages in this game are too long because this is not the first level that it has had like a six or seven ending. No, but part of it is absolutely how Lewis. Part of it is that I. Part part of it is part of it is that I died and reset to the same checkpoint three fucking times. Actually, well, I mean, um, I know that there's that, but I'm also like looking at the time marker in the stage, and by the time you were at the roller coaster bit, you were at like seven minutes. So. 
That's just what I was thinking. But if it's just... Okay, because that was that's actually one of the reasons why I don't really vibe with Sonic 3 as much as I feel like by the time you get out of, into, like, as early as freaking... Uh, oh, God, what's the third level in that game called? Um, Marble Garden? Yeah, as soon as you get to... Mar like, as early as Marble Garden, I think the stages get way too long um, in Sonic 3 and Sonic and & Knuckles. And it's part of the reason why I don't vibe with that as much. So... I, I should specify if it's not fucking obvious already. I haven't played this yet. I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll get it. Um, and that was when I thought the game was thirty bucks, and then it was sixty bucks. <laughs> I like I was to like oh. <laughs> I like oh. to think in canon, like in universe, Amy was actually just having fun playing with those badniks. All right, so I've been in this level for way too long. I apologize. But, like, I get really... I, I have a lot of fun with the bouncy levels in Sonic games. I just like playing around with the physics, you know? But you're also a very thorough player. That too. Like, I think out of all of us, you are probably the most thorough of, of us all. When it, so Combine that with my tendency to just play the slot machines in Casino Night until I actually hit a jackpot. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Fucking actual let's play of a casino. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome and back we to my casino let's totally. play. Today we're going to be doing Texas Hold'em, and I'm doing a self-imposed challenge where I can't keep any hand with a six in it. Let's begin. <laughs> And I don't want to spoil. I don't want. I don't want to get any hopes up. But I got a really good feeling about this one. Later, Lewis would later end up fucking in debt. Man. You know, it's a shame he had a four of a kind with sixes, but he, he had to ask the dealer to <laughs> to pull it back. <laughs> okay. Well. Anyway. I think the bonus stages have looped around to the beginning. Yes, they definitely have, because they went yeah, from being this. very like intricate and large to being a square. <laughs> so, so, so eventually, I stop playing the bonus stages just entirely because I have enough um, uh, medals. But right now, I'm still going into the bonus stages because the avatar that I want is not one of the most expensive ones, but even the cheaper. Avatar parts are freaking expensive, man. How many medals do you need in order to, like, get a full avatar? Okay, so a single component can cost 30 to 50 or 60 medals by itself. That's just, Jeez. like, the legs or the face. You also have to pay 10 medals for the color per part because the colors are consumable items. So if you want uh, blue legs, blue arms, and blue body, and blue head, you need to pay 40. Yes. And if you want Metal Sonic parts to go with all that blue, you need to, need to pay like 200. Fortunately, the avatar I'm going for is a little cheaper than that. I guess they just didn't think many people would go for Metal Amy. But I did. That's so... Like, that's a lot, though. Like, they must be expecting you to replay this... I don't know if you would be even able to get a full avatar after, like, playing through the game twice, um, the way you're describing it. Because you're only getting, like, maybe ten or so medals a stage, you know? Unless if, I guess, you get all bonus stages and you do really well on all of them. The way I, the way I play, you can probably afford uh, a decent avatar by the time you get to the boss. That uses the parts, <laughs> but, you know, it's mostly for battle mode. That semi-lame-ass sort of Super Smash Brothers nonsense that they use for multiplayer when you're not playing the actual multiplayer. Um, I mean, I guess that they put more effort into it than some of the other Sonic multiplayer options. You know, almost. Uh, they almost did. But, like, it could... <laughs> It could have been really interesting if they just done more with it, you know? Well, the way that you guys describe, like, the single player, well, sorry, the multiplayer in the main story, where, like, the stage zooms out and you can't see anything, I feel like it would have been much better if the multiplayer was just, like, 
everybody but does their own thing. Here's know? the thing, though. The camera zooming out is not even the problem. Uh, the game just randomly shifts focus on a different character for no fucking reason. The camera's oh. jitter jittering. Uh, basically, the multiplayer in this game would work perfectly in online, which is why it's local only. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't want too much confidence in this game. I mean, I would have be to bad. imagine that that would be held a to process and especially considering that sonic typically uses a lot of dev tricks in order to reduce like processing power like culling out certain things and um making certain areas so like if you have to account for players being at all different parts of a zone at all times i'm sure it would take a lot of processing well to do that not not necessarily if they were clever with how they programmed it they could make each player's level only load in the resources needed for what they can see you know and just keep track of where the other players are off screen and load I it know, in as I know needed that there but... is a way to do that i don't know how hard that is to i mean because i don't know how that it, works. it's not it's not a one-to-one -one comparison and I, I i i get it but i think at the very least it wouldn't hurt if they did what mario wonder did where you can enable an online mode where you can play the game along with other people playing this game at the same time but it's not exactly co-op you're just sharing the experience together. oh i still have but you but that. you but you can but you can it's it's honestly great like legit like the the online portion of mario wonders thing where it's like you you can't interact with players physically so there's no griefing but you can still help each other locate secrets uh save each other from deaths or uh, just or share power-ups together i now imagining the elden ring guy but in sonic superstar to let me solo robotnik i was gonna say <laughs> is, is mario wonder the, the dark souls of mario games <laughs> it is very souls like yes not that, I, not that i'm saying it out loud but still like i think at the very least superstars would have benefited from having at least an online mode see, like that because otherwise it's just battle you mode see guys this is why the these boss fights are actually good because they're emulating the souls like experience where you have to memorize their attack pattern and and intricately time your counter attack and if you don't get <laughs> yeah, it's it funny because i'm pretty period, sure you're just bad at video games and you need i'm to pretty sure someone has unironically used that as an argument <laughs> so like for so like fight. this boss has a whole system with those spinning things that you're supposed to jump inside them and then launch out of them amy can just double jump <laughs> it's the weather boss all over again <laughs> does tails's tails hurt enemies in this game yes yes it does uh what oh oh when he's like flying, he flies, uh, tails is tails. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he 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 hits things with his tails. There's uh, an admirable attention to detail in the way this game works in a lot of places. Honestly, in fact, the only place I can think of where they honestly, honest to god, fucked up are those goddamn orbs. So, yeah.